This is the cheapest 1TB M.2 SSD that I could find on Amazon, available on Prime anyway, although this isn't the cheapest 1TB SSD. I already tested that, the Fanshang S101, in this video you can check it in the cards above, but since that's a SATA SSD and plenty of people don't even know what SATA is anymore, I figured it was worth checking out what your M.2 options are, and it seems like this form factor commands a premium. Because where the Fanshang 2.5 inch drive was just £41.54, this was £51.99, as were a few other options. Interestingly though, this isn't just any M.2 drive, it's a PCIe Gen 4 M.2 drive. Now it isn't a full fat NVMe 2.0 drive, it's NVMe 1.4, a DRAM-less, and claims just 5GB per second reads and 4.8GB per second on writes. Although I say just there, but that's fantastic performance if true. That's faster than any Gen 3 drive, and almost 10 times faster than the Fanshang SATA drive. So let's see if your extra tenor for the same capacity is worth it. First, let's have a look at this thing. This is a standard looking 2280 single sided M.2 drive. It's pretty basic, although personally I think that things get a little interesting when you turn it over and see that they've not bothered to populate all of the pins on the back of the M.2 key. Now this isn't a mistake, drives like these don't always use all of the pins available, this is just cost cutting. That gold plating is, you know, fractions of a penny, but if you're making a million of these, well, that kind of adds up. Things get even more interesting though when you peel the sticker back and realize that not only is this a DRAMless drive, that in and of itself isn't exactly a problem, it's just not amazing, but the NAND flash packages are completely unmarked. This is the sort of thing that you generally only find on like grey market tech where the chips are either fakes or have been scrubbed so that you can't find out where they came from because they're stolen or recycled. This is, in my honest opinion, a little sus. At least the controller is legit. It's a Tenefe TC2201, a DRAMless NVMe 1.4 controller that is supposedly good for up to 7.4 gigabytes per second on reads and 7 gigabytes per second on writes. A decent chunk higher than this UD90's performance claims, although I suspect part of that is that the controller is good for up to four channels of 2400 mega transfer per second NAND, whereas this drive only has some combination of only two chips. That's likely where the performances are being left on the table. Still, especially for the price, if this does what it says it does, well, I still think it should be a pretty decent choice. So, does this meet expectations? Well, let's fire up and find out. Starting with Crystal Disk Mark and the best case scenario sequential Q depth of 8 test. The UD90 is sitting at 4.6 gigabytes per second on reads and 3.9 gigabytes per second on writes. That's almost a gig slower than claimed on writes, although only 400 megabytes per second slower on reads. That isn't a great start. And to, to be sure it isn't an instant fail, it is faster than some of the other NVMe 1.4 drives that I've tested, namely the Arico E5000 and Lexar Thor Pro, but still. With a Q depth of 1, but still sequential I.O., there isn't much change in position, only in performance. The drop here is in line with the other drives though, so that's fine. Moving on to the random 4KB blog test with a Q depth of 32, amazingly the UD90 is actually second to the top, only behind the Arico IG740 Pro. This is a bit of a funny one, because the much faster Gen 5 drives, the, the Lexar NM1090 as an example, is actually faster in reads, but a good bit slower in writes. In fact, at least with this spread of drives, the UD90 is the third slowest on reads, only behind the Thor Pro and the Fanshang SATA SSD, but in the writes, well, those are impressively strong. With a Q depth of 1 though, things go back to a more normal position, with the UD90 in the lower side of things. Still very impressive write performance, especially for an NVMe 1.4 drive, although the reads aren't quite as strong. 
Still not too bad. As for ASSSD, that has similar standings to Crystal Discmark with the UD9Z in the midfield, although on the lower end, and especially for Gen 4x4 drives, it keeps up with the Samsung 980 Pro, their original Gen 4x4 drive, at least on rice, although it's a fair bit back, 1.5 gigabytes per second or 1.6 uh, on reads. Silicon Power's own NVMe 2.0 drive, the XS7Z, is the second fastest Gen 4x4 drive I've tested here at 5.5 and 5.7 gigabytes per second reads and writes respectively, with that being a healthy lead over this UD9Z. That is to be expected, but interesting to see. As for the random 4K block test, that has the UD90 at the bottom of the Gen 4 drives. This is still totally fine performance, just isn't the best Gen 4x4 drive you can get. The read performance is on par with Gen 3 drives, which again isn't surprising. With 64 threads though, we usually see a lot more performance, and we still do, although the UD90 actually slips a little further down the charts here, even behind the WD SN750, a Gen 3 drive. At least on the read performance, it's a touch higher and higher than the Lexar Thor Pro. As for ATTO Disk Benchmark, that one's rather interesting. Both the read and write performance peaks between 32 and 256 kilobyte block sizes, but then drops quite considerably after that. That is, as you can see from the other drives included, a brand new phenomenon. Some of the other drives do have a weird flatline before going back up again, but this one just flatlines continuously, dropping below the Gen 3 drives. This is only a Gen 4 drive for that very specific block size. Anything after that and it's a midfield Gen 3 drive level of performance. Weird. As for file transfers, from a faster drive that I know can do over 3 gigabytes per second, this UD90 peaks at around 3 gigabytes per second, but isn't the most stable there. It bounces between a touch over 3 and down to the low 2 gigabyte per second mark, which isn't bad, although it isn't the absolute best that I've seen. My usual file duplication stress test though shows some interesting performance, initially running at a respectable 1.7 gigabytes per second, but after 50 gigabytes of duplicating, so 150 gigabytes total, it drops to around 1.1 gigabytes. After a further 70 or so gigabytes on top of that, the performance just drops off a cliff. It was sitting at 250 megabytes per second. That's hard drive speeds, that's not exactly appealing performance, is it? To be fair, for the price, this still isn't that bad. It's not a top-notch Gen 4x4 drive, in some cases it even loses to Gen 3 drives, although for almost a tenner less than a, a decent Gen 4x4 drive like the Crucial P310, I can see why you might buy this. Annoyingly, right after I bought this, some prices shifted on Amazon, so there are actually a couple of other drives that are one or two pounds less than this thing, including a Gen 3 drive from Silicon Power themselves, but still. I find it interesting that this thing costs a ten or more than the Fanshang SATA SSD, and how this one doesn't feel quite as clear-cut if you should buy this or not. It sure is cheap for an M.2 drive, a Gen 4x4 drive no less, but it isn't amazing. It still works just fine and will serve anyone who buys it well enough, but personally I think I would splash out a few quid more for a slightly better drive that at very least uses branded NAND chips. None of this like lasered off stuff that this thing has. Still, if you do want to pick one up or just check out the pricing where you are, I'll leave a link for you at the top of the description. With that said, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours on the, the UD90. Is this a drive you're interested in yourself? What do you think of the performance, the weird hump in ATTO? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. Like I said, if you're interested in this, uh, check the link out in the description. If you want to see that SATA SSD, the cheapest one terabyte SSD I could find on Amazon, Prime. Uh, check that video out on the end cards. Hit the subscribe button because I have a few more other uh, sort of best or the cheapest tech on Amazon ideas. And if you have any suggestions, leave those in the comments too. Otherwise, that's kind of it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.